Good morning, you two. What a beautiful day we are having. Look at the sunshine out there. Probably can't see it, but anyway, it's a beautiful day as we are mostly cooped up with this pandemic. But anyway, I'm going to hopefully lighten up your day with some two part polyurethane bush making. So let me explain what we're going to be doing. Right, so this year is a two part mix that you mix together and this will make polyurethane which can be used for making bushes so the plan is for my last video i'm going to take the standard gearbox mount rear torque mount rear engine mount whatever people call it take that off the car and then the voids that are in there we're going to stiffen them up with some polyurethane i don't really want a full polyurethane bush i don't want to spend the money on it because i don't see it as that important so this was £13, um, pretty cheap as an experiment, should work. So first thing to do, get under the car, bolt it off, and then I can show you exactly what I plan on doing. Right, so this is what we are talking about. This is the gearbox mount, so we're going to pop them off, bolt here, bolt here. Normally this one doesn't drop down, so you may have to take the brackets out up here, slacken them off to get it out. So. Let's get started, eh? Oh, that is tight. That is really tight. So I should just pry out of there. Hopefully. We go, we go. There you are. He's out. So this front part of the mount is fairly solid. I mean, there's a bit of rotation on movement. Whereas for pulling up and down, so any forward, backwards, that's, that's fine. That's sound enough, but obviously we've got this then that does cause the engine rocking movement. What we're going to do now, this little piece here, I think is a little insert, seems to go right through. So we're going to have a look at getting that out first, um, see if it will pull out, and then we'll see what we are left with. Yeah, it looks like it goes, it does, it goes right through. Now I've seen some other pictures of engine mounts and they don't have this, so is this an addition? It's definitely going to um, stiffen up any flex in that. Let me know if you was as this, because I've seen pictures online and they're just an open void. So, I think best thing to do now is clean them all up and then we can start preparing to mould some polyurethane in. Right, so I've cleaned that out with a drill bit. I haven't actually drilled any holes in the rubber like I thought I may do. But if you look through that now, you can see it's um, cleaned out. There's only like cast in thin flanges of rubber that was dividing the two parts, which would stop the polyurethane running through. So um, I did have the thought of this 
park you, drilling some holes through. Um, but you know what? I'm not going to touch it because that's fine as it is. All I want to do is enhance it. I don't want to ruin it. So what I'm going to do is now thoroughly degrease it, clean it up, and then we will be looking at how we're going to do some kind of mould to stop the uh, polyurethane. Because once we pour, obviously, we don't want to... It'll just exit in straight out the bottom. So we're going to have to make something up to keep it sealed in the bottom. So let's degrease it, let's get it clean, and then we'll deal with that. This stuff, this engine degreaser, came in a, in a car that I bought a while back. It's only like one pound stuff, but you know, it's absolutely brilliant for cleaning up the engine. I'm going to use it on this, I'm going to spray it all in there, uh, give it a scrub, rinse, and a dry. Right, so the mount's had about three or four degreasing cleans and being rinsed off, it's been left to dry. Now what I'm looking at now is how I'm going to seal the bottom off. So I've seen videos on this, people put tape, um, gaffer tape, whatever, masking tape, not masking tape, or what's the word, of duct tape. So I could tape it all off and seal it. So when I put it upside down, pour down, that will try and contain it. But I want it to like overflow so that it's not just filling in the voids. We've got to spread out so that it will keep keep it within. It can't come out. Now, if you look at this, I tilt it. You can see that the bush is set back from this upper rim, so we could flood it to this level, and then we'd get ourselves a little bit of an overlap. I'm also considering using a jubilee clip. Uh, sealing that on raised and then flooding it up to the level of that outer mount point there <coughs> so I could do that top and bottom like if that's on there and I seal it up see when it's down like that I can put another one on the top and we can fill it up and then oh, it'll serve like, um, like a cotton reel type, bu type of bush there so It'll be in then and it won't be able to come out so i'm going to look at ways of what i think is the best to do that obviously there's gaps in the jubilee clip so i could put a rim of tape around first lip that over and then try and um, seal it that way so we'll give it a go let's stick the camera on and while i'm doing it and you can see what ideas i come up with So this is what I've come up with, as you just saw. Started off with some loom tape uh, wound around, then the um, jubilee clip over the top. That's in line with the highest point there. Now the loom tape is like a fabric tape, so it's quite good at um, sealing. So hopefully that'll give us a nice seal to come up that edge. Done the same there, and carefully um, taped it off. So I've been careful to press around here to try and see it and to the centre point. I mean if we had to clean any up little spills up at the end I think we could cope with that. It wouldn't be the end of the world. 
so that's ready now I can do a pour in there and I can pour up to probably just a tad under that level and we'll have our overlapping flange either side so the poly that's in there can't then pop out because it's going to be on both sides so now we're going to have to look at mixing it up right so I am set ready to go I've got a scales because with this you've got to weigh it um, up you can't just pour equal amounts it's not the same amount in each bottle so it has to be done by weight and you have three to four minutes to pour it so I've got scales there and I pour in there take it off give it a good mix and then dump it in so hopefully this goes to plan pour part B into part A so this is part A so we'll put this in first and then we'll add this so I'll pour some of this in see what weight we come up with as we get about um, say a third of the way up oh, good grief scales not even moving right I'm going to go to there that's uh, is that 500 grams it's only 250 grams or whatever that is 50 gra no, 50 grams so put 50 grams of that in we'll take this up to 100 grams we'll start mixing and then we better get cracking Yeah, that's 100 grams. Right, so we got three to four minutes to mix this and use it. You can see this is a, a black one as well. I think you can get different types of colours, but I went for the black, so we less noticeable. Right, well that is definitely mixed thoroughly. Let's start our pour. I want to pour slow. I don't want to build up any bubbles down in there get a nice little drip off oh, that's coming up nice coming up nice that's filling them all up there to give you a little close up yeah See a minute, let's get a bit of a pour on again. Get you in by a look at that. Take him up just below. That looks pretty. Oh, we got seepage. We got seepage. We got a lot of seepage. Right, hopefully we're not going to lose so much, it's all going to run out, that don't look good. Need that to start thickening up, I think we'll all do once it um, starts to cure a little bit, it should seal itself and then I'll just top up the top. I got enough, oh yeah, I've got to go on thick now, so that should, uh, that should start to congeal itself, I'll just add a little bit more up, yeah. Oh yeah, look at that now. Let's go in now. Yeah, that's not going to pour now. So that probably will be sealing itself up down there now. Yeah, it hasn't been long at all and that is going. Or has it been two minutes? Oh, that, that's completely skinned over. Look at that. Definitely doesn't take long. Right, so I've had this cooking in the sun in the windowsill in the house. It's nice and warm, so I should speed up the curing. Uh, it's been about half an hour. The tab said 20 to 40 minutes demold time. So before it goes too hard, we're going to open it all up, get the uh, Jubilee clips off and everything. Oh, so that one popped off nice and easy. Peel masking tape off. We've got, we've got nothing down in there, which is good. It's sealed from the bottom. Right, so that's the top shape. That is solid as a rock. Solid. Solid as a rock. Right, 
get all of this off, see what we got to look like under there. There you are, peel it away. So you don't have to worry too much about the appearance. There you are, that's tidy. You can see it, that's formed a nice sort of flange. Let me uh, trim that down, tidy it up a little bit. That side's definitely turned out flatter and better. So it just needs more cure in time, but I don't see any reason why I can't put this back on the car. Uh, the car's not going anywhere. I think it can take up to seven days to fully cure. I mean, that's solid as a rock already and it's been half an hour. But I'm gonna put it back on the car because we've got a lot more stuff to do. The car's not going anywhere though. I want to get on with other jobs, so we put that on and let it cure when it's on the car. <coughs> this is rock solid. I mean, it doesn't even feel like rubber. It feels like hard plastic. So it's only been half an hour, but that is really, really solid. So I'm expecting that's going to feel a bit harsher than I actually expected because it's pretty much all filled. But it is what it is. We use about 100 grams of a 500 gram kit, and I only use about half of that, so really, use about 50 grams. So you could do a ton of bushes with um, with that kit if you could fully cast your own if you wanted to, easy enough. But there you are. I'm going to stick that back on the car, and the job will be a good one. So that's it. It's all done, it's all fitted. I'm going to leave the car standing out for a while, like I said. We've got lots of other jobs to start on it. We're going to be doing the hard race ball joints. You would have seen in my previous video. And the super super pro polyurethane bushes. We're going to be making our own for the front wishbones. So we're going to get into changing the roll centre. Sorting out bump steer. And that's where this little gauge comes in. That I showed in the last video as well. So more on that when we do it. I've got a lot to get on with. I'm going to get cracking but I'll see you in the next video. Cheers bye. Right, so I'm here just editing the footage now. It's been a couple of days since I done it. I think it was two or three days ago that I actually put the bush on. I think it's going to be a fail. I'm going to tell you now, I think the stuff I bought is wrong. It's, it hasn't gone like polyurethane. It's hardened up like plastic. And what was left in the tub, um, I've been checking every day to see if it would go rubber like and if it stayed like plastic, it just snapped. So. I think the old bush is going to fail. I think what's going to happen is going to um, break down and crack and then just fall out. So we tried. It is what it is. Like you say, sometimes uh, I don't learn my lessons really from trying to save money. I end up spending uh, more money in the process. But, you know, if if it was the proper stuff, it would have worked fine. But for some reason, this was listed as polyurethane resin and, and it's gone hard like plastic. Um, maybe... I bought the wrong stuff and I don't really know what I'm doing but anyway hopefully you've enjoyed the video thank you for watching I'll see you on the next one bye